friends today i will be continuing my discussion on the functions of hypothalamus today in today's lecture i will try to i will discuss with the endocrine regulation of hypothalamus as you have seen this side uh, a cartoon giving four different types of regulator regulations endocrine regulations by the hypothalamus this i would discuss as uh, in subsequent slides as you have seen my earlier lecture today's lecture i am continuing the second part of the lecture that is the endocrine regulation the remaining parts i will be covering in the subsequent future now if we consider the endocrine glands and the relation of the hypothalamus it has been told that it is a master gland or master endocrine gland so that means uh, it covers almost all the endocrine organs in our body now if we try to imagine what are those endocrine glands which are not under the control of hypothalamus maybe very few few of them will be there maybe parathyroid gland is one of them i cannot bet for uh, thymus because thymus is controlled by the uh, immunological responses uh, which i would uh, i would talk here so now let us consider one the hypothalamus controls the endocrine glands by the hormones uh, released stimulating or inhibiting hormones released uh, from uh, from the hypothalamus to the pituitary in the median eminence the second it directly releases uh, it synthesizes the hormones or the as a, as a neurotransmitter and then release into the hypothalamo hypophysial uh, uh, portal system that is the, in the posterior pituitary so that means uh, in the first part it is the control of the anterior pituitary in the second part it is directly uh, releasing the hormones in the posterior pituitary uh, and the third part it uh, participates or in, involves the sympathetic nervous system uh, to perform the sympathetic functions especially those are sympathetic functions are necessary for a flight and a fright responses for sos responses uh, that is the uh, stimulation of the adrenal medulla uh, releasing uh, uh, large quantities of the catecholamines and fourthly the uh, through the vagus the hypothalamus through the vagus uh, try to regulate uh, the number of visceral organs uh, like uh, pancreas the G git uh, hormones and including uh, the immunological uh, or uh, the thymus uh, which is supplied in the uh, thoracic uh, mediastinal tissue going further uh, same thing i have put it in the in the format here you have uh, the number one the secretion of uh, Uh, regulatory hormones that uh, are regulating the hormones secreted by the anterior pituitary this is the anterior pituitary and these hormones uh, uh, they will be uh, like uh, trop tropic hormones like uh, thy uh, thyrotropin corticotropin gonadotropins that is the lh and fsh prolactin growth hormone uh, melanocyte uh, stimulating hormone melanocyte stimulating hormone comes from this intermediate low then we have uh, in the second part a direct 
production of the hormones these are synthesized here the neurons in the um, supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus and then they, they are released into this uh, portal system here and uh, through the posterior pituitary that is a uh, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin thirdly it i as i have already mentioned it has a direct link with the the suprarenal gland through the uh, preganglionic uh, uh, fibers preganglionic fibers which supply the the medulla adrenal medulla and this adrenal medulla uh, secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine fourthly through the vagal output that means hypothalamus controls the vagal output and that would uh, uh, regulate or uh, control the uh, secretions of course uh, this vagus controls the exocrine secretion the endocrine secretions of the pancreas the gut hormones and heart and uh, even uh, uh, mediastinal uh, uh, structures like thymus and that is uh, through the dorsal uh, nucleus of the vagus or the nucleus ambiguous that reach there that reach to the, the this is the abdominal viscera or thoracic viscera now let us uh, consider the anatomical organization of the pituitary gland to receive the hypothalamic uh, inputs now if you are looking at the pituitary gland this is the pituitary gland here this is the anterior uh, lobe and this is the posterior lobe so this is pars nervosa uh, pars distalis and uh, this uh, this part the infundibular part of the neck is is the you have the uh, median eminence you have the median eminence here you can see the plexuses the superior hypophysial plexuses and in these plexuses you can see that uh, uh, the neurons are the uh, secretions coming from the dorsal medial nucleus, ventral medial nucleus, infundibular nuclei, and the arcuate nuclei. They release their hormones here in this, and they will uh, reach to the the anterior pituitary uh, different cells like uh, somatotrophs or uh, thyrotrophs, corticotrophs or lactotrophs to secrete a particular uh, uh, hormone. Then we have here. Uh, these green ones uh, these are the oxytocin or uh, antidiuretic hormone secreting uh, uh, neurons they will uh, synthesize here and they will be transported here and then released here through the uh, neuronal release mechanism and uh, they will enter into the circulation uh, in the posterior pituitary then we have here in the um, intermediate uh, lobe of the pituitary the melanocyte uh, stimulating hormone so now just a word or two on the median eminence the median eminence is the area where hypothalamic releasing or inhibiting hormones are secreted you can just see that here and this region contains very few nerve cells but receives there will be a large number of endings here the terminals are here and in close proximity with these blood vessels or blood capillaries so that whatever they are released they are entering into the circulation and they will be entering here so that means the releasing or in release inhibiting hormones they are synthesized and directly they activate or suppress the function of a particular type of endocrine cell situated in the anterior pituitary now if you if you try to see a little more about the anatomical perspective of the arrangement of the neurons in the in the hypothalamus you have a, a three set of neurons one set here one and two three and four and five now the three and four are the set of neurons that would that would uh, project onto these capillaries where they make the release or release inhibiting uh, hormones so you have these releasing hormones they are stimulatory hormones they will reach to the uh, uh, anterior pituitary and uh, they they release the hormones uh, in these uh, blood vessels blood capillaries now these these two this first set that is three and four are regulated by these uh, 
uh, number one number one neuron it is directly projecting on projecting on to the the soma of the number three and uh, this uh, projecting uh, neuron this is uh, trying to uh, modulate the activity either at the somatic level or in the body level or number two if you are looking at at the uh, presynaptic that means where it is releasing that would try to inhibit so that means these are uh, the uh, neurons which uh, try to uh, suppress uh, the release or inhibit the release so they, they, that means they are participating for the release inhibiting uh, mechanism if you are looking at these five five is that those hormones uh, present in the supra optic and paraventricular nucleus that is for the secretion of the um, antidiuretic hormonal oxytocin and they are uh, in the neurohypophysis they are released in the the portal system present in the neurohypophysis and uh, that would be uh, for the uh, director release here so these are the things so now i have explained all these things and uh, this is taken from the uh, candles so now the number one and two neurons are either uh, dopaminergic or monomainergic neurons they will try to inhibit here or peptidergic neurons maybe something like a somatostatin now moving on these are the various hormones uh, regulated by the hypothalamus the various interpretatory hormones uh, regulated by the uh, hypothalamus so now here in this uh, particular column we have the hypothalamic releasing hormones this uh, the violet one or purple one is indicating the nuclei of the hypothalamus and these are the interpretatory hormones let us uh, uh, read it the trh thyrotropin releasing hormone the medial medial paraventricular nucleus and releases TSH that is thyrotropin and prolactin. CRH corticotropin releasing hormone again it is from the same nu similar nuclei the median median medial paraventricular nucleus releases ACTH or corticotropin and beta lipotropin. The GNRH it is a me medial preoptic area and the anterior ventral periventricular area and that will uh, release a uh, luteinizing hormone and uh, the follicle stimulating hormone FSH now we have the growth hormone releasing hormone or TRH so coming from the orchid nucleus this is the growth hormone the prolactin releasing factor so now we are telling it is a, a prolactin releasing factor because uh, the thyrotropin uh, is a sorry about that the prolactin releasing factor so this is again from the arcuate nucleus and it uh, releases prolactin uh, msh releasing factor that would uh, be again from the arcuate nucleus this is known as mrf and uh, that would be uh, melanocyte stimulating that would make the release the melanocyte stimulating hormone from the intermediate to lobe of the interpituitary and a beta endorphin so now let us consider about the release inhibiting hormones these releasing inhibiting hormones are a prolactin inhibiting hormone prolactin inhibiting hormone so this is a prolactin release inhibiting hormone you can say that so it is a dopamine also so we don't know yet whether there is a peptide hormone which is known as which can be nomenclatured as a peptide inhibiting hormone or the is it because of the dopamine as discussed earlier so now what it does if they are present in the orchid nucleus and they will regulate the secretion of a, a release of prolactin then growth hormone release inhibiting hormone growth hormone release inhibiting hormone or TIH or somatostatin from the orchid nucleus of the hypothalamus it it tries to uh, suppress the release of growth hormone from the somatotrophs and also uh, suppress the release of uh, thyrotropin that is uh, from the thyrotrop now msh uh, release inhibiting factor so this is another another factor so we don't know the exact uh, uh, 
these things details about this factor but they it is there it is again coming from the orchid nucleus and it tries to regulate the melanocyte stimulating hormone now so we can now look into the how this uh, hypothalamus regulates uh, uh, various uh, pituitary hormones now you have this uh, basic regulatory uh, feedback uh, loop i have the feedback loop here made so we have the hypothalamus anterior pituitary and the target gland now hypothalamus uh, is a stimulatory to the anterior pituitary um, Oh, interpretary cells especially we have a, a thyrotrops for a thyro, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone corticotrops for a corticotropin releasing hormone or somatotrops for the gonadotropin uh, uh, somatotrops for the growth hormone releasing or a gonadotrops for the gonadotropin releasing hormone. like that we have a specific cells here in the anterior pituitary so they will be activated by the the hormone what is called as a releasing hormone that would come here that would stimulate the anterior pituitary uh, particular type of cell and that particular type of cell secretes the tropic hormone so that means i have already said tsh crh uh, lh fsh and uh, other growth hormone or uh, all those tropic hormones and they will reach the target gland and from the target gland the uh, the heart the target endocrine gland secretes a um, hormone this is the hormone secreted by the target target gland and this target hormone exerts a, a negative feedback loop one at the anterior pituitary level this is short loop that means it tries to suppress or decrease the activity and uh, then it will try to decrease the activity of the hypothalamus at the long loop level this is the basic regulatory mechanism or feedback mechanism which the hypothalamus and pituitary work together now so this basic structure we have uh, because it is not uh, restrictive because it, it it involves many more mechanisms so that means uh, this basic mechanisms are also supplemented or also influenced by a number of uh, uh, inputs coming from the uh, the neocortex that is the frontal cortex the somatosensory cortex the motor cortex uh, suppose if you are trying to do an activity if you are trying to do certain uh, uh, things uh, actions uh, or even if you are thinking so that would be uh, involving say for example if i want to run so that means i should be prepared to have those uh, all those uh, endocrine profiles ready so these are neocortical inputs or if i am worrying or i am trying to uh, i am upset by the emotions those emotions are to be supplemented by the endocrine uh, uh, components or in uh, the hormones then we have the limbic system that that regulates especially the limbic system goes hand in hand because all the emotions all the emotions are to be supported by the limbic activities either uh, aggression or uh, playing dead or uh, uh, placidity and uh, the so that is asso associated with a number of other hormones that is the limbic then reticular formation because the reticular formation is required because in this reticular formation you have all the sensory inputs especially those type of sensory inputs uh, which are uh, essential visceral components within the pain and uh, then uh, thermal sensations uh, they are very important uh, uh, to be regulated uh, by the hypothalamus so that means it, it is having a connection to the reticular formation then stress the number of uh, uh, stress that would influence the hypothalamus and uh, that in turn increases the synthesis of uh, uh, maybe one or more hormones so may not be the uh, uh, crh alone it will come along with other hormones or set of hormones that may come so then another thing the circadian rhythm the circadian rhythm the day night cycle and the suprachiasmatic nucleus and the day night cycle and the visual uh, photic inputs uh, they will also influence the the hypothalamus the exercise 
that would that would um, stimulate the hypothalamus to to be ready with the uh, new endocrine because it has to it has to produce the uh, responses in terms of the uh, heat generation energy generation energy conservation uh, so on so that means exercise also activates hypothalamus uh, in producing the releasing hormones even you can take about the uh, i have not mentioned here the eating eating if you are if you are trying to look in the eating so that eating mechanism require uh, the entire um, preparation of the entire uh, uh, gastrointestinal system and even uh, uh, if you are looking at a, as an animal uh, looking for the food or hunting the hunting the food and uh, getting the food so on so that is plan that is uh, that is also requiring a hypothalamic activity so then uh, similarly for the uh, the mating behavior so the where the hypothalamus is involved now environmental factors environmental factors like uh, the cold or um, uh, hot environments uh, they will try to influence the hypothalamus uh, they will try to change the hormonal profile and uh, others uh, maybe there are uh, uh, specific things for each one of them say for example in case of um, prolactin secretion the stimulation of the breast or suckling re reflex or the uh, the reflex is originating from the the uh, cervix uh, that means a stretched uh, uh, uterus so those uh, uh, those things also play a role so these are the advanced regulatory mechanisms uh, that is how they are operating so once i have been i have explained these things uh, i will uh, just go further with the individual uh, uh, the trophic uh, individual releasing hormones let us uh, start with the trh this is the trh here and we have the uh, trh the hypothalamus releases uh, trh and this uh, trh acts on the thyrotrophs in the interpituitary and that would release the tsh and that would uh, activate the thyroid gland thyroid gland in turn uh, uh, secretes the triiodotyronine and um, thyroxine and that these uh, t3 and t4 that would have a, a negative feedback uh, inputs to the interpituitary this is short loop that would uh, try to decrease the tsh levels and it also have an input to the hypothalamus wherein the trh secretion is diminished so this is a negative this is a long loop and negative feedback in in addition in addition we have we have uh, the other hormones like glucocorticoids glucocorticoids and dopamine they will also uh, suppress the anterior pituitary because these are coming from the other areas of the uh, limbic system or the um, mesolimbic uh, area so that means uh, the glucocorticoids are there in the entire component and uh, dopamine is coming from the mesolimbic area that will suppress the anterior uh, pituitary so this is the regulation of the thyroid gland so now if you are looking back here the neocortical inputs regarding thyroid gland because if it is a cold environment if you are looking at so that means uh, the preparation for the uh, thermogenesis so that means you look at that uh, neocortical and uh, limbic so that means uh, the emotions associated uh, so they will try to if you are uh, trying to be excited so when you are excited you need to have uh, more energy so then it is activating the trh secretion reticular formation these are a thermal and thermal inputs uh, these thermal inputs uh, either uh, if it is a, a cold then uh, that would try to produce uh, more trh secretion if it is hot that will try to diminish the trh action so that uh, uh, less uh, th uh, thyroid activity is uh, brought about now the circadian activity especially the circadian rhythm they they mostly that will influence the hypothalamus so in the morning hours you have these trh levels at a higher level then exercise will activate the hypothalamus to release trh because trh is necessary for uh, uh, the uh, secretion of the thyroid gland and then t3 uh, t4 so these t3 t4 are uh, are general required for general metabolism 
So that means for all the uh, energy genesis, uh, calorie genesis, uh, you require T3 and T4. So for that reason, getting ready for the exercise activity. The environmental factor, factors like cold, hot, and other conditions. Now, stress will suppress uh, this uh, activity because uh, it may be having a, a dopamine there. Dopamine is coming and stress will be having a glucocorticoid there. And these things, in addition, stress by itself increase, decreases or suppresses the hypothalamus uh, to release TRH. This is about a thyroid gland. Now, going back with the adrenal cortex. Uh, in the adrenal cortex, uh, we are looking at the only the glucocorticoid, uh, uh, glucocorticoid uh, regulation. The mineral corticoid regulation is brought about uh, uh, by the renin angiotensin aldosterone system or loop. So that means this is mainly a glucocorticoid uh, uh, regulation. So now this glucocorticoid regulation, the system is same hypothalamus, the corticotropin releasing hormone then corticotrop here in the anterior pituitary and the corticotrop releases ACTH, ACTH adrenocorticotropic hormone or corticotropin. So that will uh, uh, activate the adrenal cortex to release the uh, cortisol. Now the cortisol, uh, then you, the level of cortisol in the uh, blood uh, that would uh, either have a negative feedback effect on the anterior pituitary corticotrops here or negative feedback on the hypothalamic neurons uh, in the um, paraventricular or dorsomedial nucleus or archaic nucleus of the hypothalamus that would try to decrease so that CRH is diminished. So this is the short loop and long loop. And in addition, what happens, uh, we have the inflammatory mediators like uh, interleukins and leukotrienes. The, the leukotrienes are coming from the leukocytes, the derived factors, and interleukins are coming from the, the entire, um, uh, entire range of um, uh, inflammatory, pro-inflammatory molecules. They will activate the interleukotry to release the uh, ACTH. Now, if I'm going back here, the neocortical inputs, I need not to stress there, the limbic input because uh, uh, they are the hormones associated with the stress. So the limbic inputs and then reticular formation, so that will, that will be there. And uh, the pain, pain sensation that would, uh, that would uh, uh, increase the CRH really because it is getting prepared for the uh, stressful situation. So now the, the circadian rhythm uh, will activate the hypothalamus uh, to make, especially the cortisol levels are high in the morning. So the cortisol levels are high. So that means it is because of the day night cycle through the suprachiasmatic nucleus as well as through the uh, pineal melatonin uh, levels. So both of them would activate this uh, circadian day night cycle and influence the hypothalamus. Exercise, as I have already mentioned, will influence the hypothalamus. Environmental stress like um, heat and cold or any other uh, uh, parameters, uh, they will uh, try to influence the, the hypothalamus. The environmental uh, factors means uh, uh, they will try to, they will try to. Then stress, the stress uh, in the sense that the stress increases the CRH levels. So this is, uh, uh, rather, I will ju just change it. Uh, the stress increases. Uh, sorry about that. And the stress uh, increases the CRH levels and the stimulates it. It has a stimulatory effect, uh, and this uh, stimulates the CRH, and then uh, uh, that would increase the ACTH and adrenal cortical activity. All the glucocorticoid levels are elevated and inflammatory chemicals I have already mentioned. Now, uh, we go to the another hormone uh, that is a growth hormone, regulation of a growth hormone. So now these are uh, the basic, there are two, two feedback. In case of a growth hormone and prolactin, there are two things operating. One, growth hormone releasing hormone, growth hormone releasing hormone, this is a positive effect and uh, somatostatin uh, that means a growth hormone release inhibiting hormone. Let us consider the growth hormone releasing hormone stimulates the growth, um, the somatotrop here 
and the semitotrophs releases growth hormone from the anterior pituitary and in the liver and other organs uh, that is converted to especially in the liver insulin like a growth factor one insulin like growth factor one or also it is known as somatomedin and uh, the somatomedin is necessary for the tissue growth and the tissue expansion proliferation and all the effects especially the skeletal muscular and other tissue parameters now if once the growth hormone is there and this growth hormone will have uh, an an inhibitory effect on the growth hormone so that means uh, this, this one i have not shown there so this will have an inhibitory effect that will try to inhibit the growth hormone releasing this uh, uh, neuron here in the um, hypothalamus that's one feedback this is the one feedback and then the growth hormone uh, the feedbacks are coming from inter inter that's insulin like growth factor that would uh, uh, try to proliferate the tissues and that would uh, try to activate the uh, somatostatin neurons or somatostatin neurons somatostatin uh, decreases so that means it stimulates uh, somatostatin that decreases uh, that uh, uh, that is uh, inhibitory and uh, somatostatin uh, uh, decreases the growth hormone release so that means uh, it, it tries to prevent the release of uh, growth hormone and decreases at the same time this insulin like growth factors uh, would suppress the somatotraps to release growth hormone so that is that is how the uh, growth is uh, growth hormone uh, level is uh, controlled now uh, besides this uh, the auto regulatory mechanism we have other regulatory features on this side uh, we have uh, the stimulatory factors first one is a ghrelin coming from the uh, gastric mucosa this is a hormone required for uh, uh, appetite or uh, the feeding it stimulates the feeding center ghrelin and this ghrelin uh, also stimulates the growth hormone or uh, activate the hypothalamus uh, to release the growth hormone releasing hormone so that means uh, so that means that, that tries to increase the growth so because they, it increases the uh, uh, food intake and food intake has to be uh, assimilated uh, in terms of uh, growth so this is a ghrelin it, it acts on both the sides one at the hypothalamic level one at the interpretatory level so now other other factors like uh, the sleep especially the stage two and stage three of the uh, non-rapid eye movement sleep that would activate the growth hormone releasing hormone then circadian rhythms so the growth hormone levels are high at 6 a.m in the morning and uh, the circadian activity so that the daily diurnal variation that is happening so that is because of the day night cycles and that means that is linked with the pineal gland and it is also linked with the suprachiasmatic uh, uh, network so this uh, this is also increasing the growth hormone releasing hormone the exercise yes that would activate the stress that would activate the growth hormone releasing hormone the amino acids uh, that means uh, increased uh, food intake or, or amino acid especially yes, especially the arginine uh, that would stimulate the growth hormone releasing hormone here from the uh, hypothalamus then we have uh, sex steroids especially uh, testosterone or uh, est estrogen they will uh, activate the growth hormone because uh, a particular set of organs have to be developed because of the to manifest with the the uh, secondary sex uh, organs to growth of the secondary sex organs uh, only in association with the sex hormones uh, and the growth hormone the particular organs will have a uh, uh, growth so that means we have these sex steroids they will stimulate these things so that the particular gland is growing or say for example if a particular body size has to be increased or if there is a growth of the mammary gland or if there is a adipose tissue distribution and all those things are sex steroid linked to these things now adipose tissue so now this adipose tissue increases um, that would uh, stimulate uh, the leptin formation or it, it, it increases the leptin leptin stimulates the growth hormone releasing hormone so that uh, the adipose tissue is accumulated now if you are this is these are a stimulatory 
factors. On this side, we have the inhibitory factors. One is the REM sleep. If you look here, it is a NREM sleep, which stimulates the growth. REM sleep, what it does, it stimulates the somatostatin. That means it decreases the growth hormone release. So the REM sleep. Then hyperglycemia, hyperglycemia. Uh, I'm sorry about that uh, spelling mistake. The hyperglycemia uh, that would uh, that would uh, stimulate the somatostatin. So that means that decreases the growth hormone because uh, the levels of the hyperlipidemia, same effect. The aging, so it stimulates the somatostatin. Whereas if you are looking at it here, hypoglycemia would uh, activate because of uh, growth hormone. Now. So these are the, uh, the factors, various factors uh, regulating the growth hormone. So I have listed them here in, this, uh, uh, in the table here, the stimulating effects and inhibitory effects on the growth hormone secretion, hypoglycemia, fasting, decreased free fatty acid levels, which I have already discussed, the protein-rich diet, the increased amino acid, arginine infusion that would increase the growth hormone, exercise, increase the growth hormone, the stress, trauma, excitement that would increase the growth hormone, NREM sleep, stage 2 and stage 3, increase the growth hormone, glucagon that would uh, um, be uh, stimulating the growth hormone, ghrelin I have said is coming from the stomach and it stimulates the food intake so that will also increase the growth hormone and uh, diurnal variation uh, coming from the suprachiasmatic nucleus and also from the and melatonin and uh, testosterone estrogen sex steroids i said and uh, the pyrogens they will stimulate now what are the inhibitory um, factors so these inhibitory factors are hyperglycemia hyperlipidemia growth hormone feedback just growth hormone itself gives a feedback inhibition the aging the obesity that is through the leptins somatostatin somatomedins the increased cortisol levels and the REM sleep. So this is about a, a growth hormone a, a secretion from the pituitary, how the hypothalamus uh, controls I have discussed. Now comes with the prolactin. This is another hormone which is similar to growth hormone, wherein you have a two sides. One is a, a releasing hormone, one is the inhibitory factor. So now hypothalamus has a, a prolactin releasing factors are prolactin releasing hormones on one side that would uh, activate the anterior pituitary lactotrophs that would uh, increase the prolactin secretion and this prolactin acts on the target organ especially the breast and uh, if you are looking at the hypothalamus we have the inhibitory factors the prolactin inhibitory factor or prolactin uh, uh, release inhibiting hormones so that means uh, the PIF that suppresses it so that prolactin level is decreased. Let us uh, see. So what is happening once the prolactin levels are high, these prolactin levels are high, they try to, uh, through a short feedback loop, they try to uh, balance the interpituitary lactotrophs. So at the same time, they would suppress the hypothalamic neurons uh, that would secrete the, the PRH. PRH, they will try to de decrease. Now, this is a negative feedback loop. Now, the prolactin on the other side that would uh, stimulate these PIF, that means uh, the uh, prolactin inhibiting factors, they will activate the PIF. And this PIF in turn inhibits the uh, lactotrophs there. So that means uh, it has a double control. It's under the dual control. One uh, negative feedback loop and a positive feedback here and then again negative feedback so that means a, a stimulation inhibition it is inhibition and stimulation so this is how these two are maybe growth hormone is also similar and it is a uh, prolactin is also similar now what are the other factors let me read about uh, these these components of uh, prolactin inhibiting factors what are they the dopamine is one of the prolactin inhibiting factors so I, show, I have shown those uh, particular slides wherein they control uh, number one and the two neurons. They control the, the release of releasing these things, dopamine and the GABA. These, these two are inhibitory transmitters. So they will try to decrease the 
uh, prolactin levels. So then we have a somatostatin that is for the, the growth, but it also uh, possesses the prolactin inhibiting activity. So that means these are the three factors uh, that would, uh, that is why they are called a prolactin inhibiting factors, not as a hormone because these are the group of uh, chemicals. Now prolactin releasing factors are the TRH is one of the prolactin releasing hormones or it increases the, uh, act activates the electrotrop. Oxytocin, because uh, oxytocin and prolactin go hand in hand and oxytocin uh, is also uh, stimulates the prolactin synthesis so that uh, the milk is, oxytocin helps the milk secretion, prolactin helps the milk formation. So that means they go hand in hand. Oxytocin is one of them, and the neurotensin is one of the another uh, molecule that would be uh, releasing hormone. Now, if if I am looking back here, these are uh, stimulants. These stimulants are uh, one uh, stimulants for the PRH, that's prolactin releasing hormone, estrogen and progesterone levels, because uh, estrogen and progesterone are necessary for the growth of the mammary gland. So that means uh, one is necessary for the SNR growth, the progesterone and its secretion. The estrogen is uh, uh, necessary for the ducts and the SNR growth so that the, the, the mammary glands will grow. So then glucocorticoids are also necessary because they are, uh, they, they try to uh, increase the, the growth of the, the memory gland. So then plasma osmolality. So that means uh, that is also because that is a plasma osmolality in turn uh, is linked with the oxytocin and that would be in turn uh, will be uh, stimulating the uh, growth hormone. The suckling, suckling is the cutaneous stimulation. The baby when starts sucking the, the milk for the milk that would activate through the uh, somatosensory system through the um, uh, the reticular formation and then uh, the thalamus and the hypothalamic loop uh, that would activate the uh, prolactin uh, synthesis that, that activates the prolactin releasing hormone. The sexual stimulation also increases the prolactin releasing hormone. So then reticular stimulation, because the reticular stimulation, again, I'm telling reticular stimulation is coming back. Maybe it is a combination with the uh, suckling reflex or other sensory modalities are coming up. Uh, so they will stimulate the prolactin releasing hormone. Now, on this side, uh, we have the circadian activity. This is a dark and this is a, the daytime. So the daytime activates PRH, the nighttime activates the PIR. So that is what uh, you can think about. So you can uh, circadian activity that would uh, try to balance uh, these two, these two things. Now the light, the smell, the stress, the sound, they will all activate the prolactin inhibiting factors. So this side is the inhibitory component. They stimulate the inhibitory component. This side, they stimulate the uh, releasing hormones. So this is all about uh, uh, prolactin. Now we move on to the uh, next one. Uh, this is one of the most complicated uh, uh, regulatory mechanism the hypothalamus performs. Now I am just trying to give you the the brief outline of this thing because it is uh, um, more than what we try to perceive it. Now let us start the GnRH. So we have what is a gonadotropin releasing hormone. Though we have two gonadotropins, so like a luteinizing hormone and a follicle stimulating hormone, both in male and female. So, so previously the luteinizing hormone in male was named something else. Now I don't want to name the luteinizing. Now we we know that it's a luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. So though they are not, they are misnomer for the male, but they are okay. We can understand the luteinizing hormone acts on the ludic cells, ludic cells of the testis. The follicle stimulating hormone acts on the gonadal cells of the spermatogonial cells. Now, let us come, come back here. Hypothalamus secretes the GnRH. And this GnRH stimulates the anterior pituitary to release FSH and LH and FSH. So this is how it is coming up. The FSH acts on the graphene follicle. 
the gonads here, the graphene follicles in the ovary, and the gonadal cells, that means uh, here in the spermatogonial cells in the testis. And the LH acts on the theca or uh, corpus luteal cells in the ovary, and the, that's the graphene follicle or in the corpus luteum, or the LH acts on the leading cells in the testis to secrete the progesterone or testosterone. Progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. Now, coming back, granulosa cells, they will secrete estrogen and also inhibin. So that means FSH acts on the gonadal cells, that is the granulosa cells, that would, uh, uh, they will proliferate, they will secrete estrogen, and uh, they will have a positive feedback inputs there, and then also they will have release the inhibin. Now, this inhibin uh, is also released from the Sartoli cells in males. Now, if you are looking back, we have the inhibin here. So now the, in the feedback loop, if you are looking at one, the LH, FSH are coming and this LH, FSH activate the gonads, they secrete sex steroids and inhibin. Now, what these sex steroids do, they will have a negative feedback uh, in the effect on the interpituitary and in the hypothalamus these uh, may have negative or positive feedback so this is where the problem is so when hypothalamus wants to decide whether it is a negative or positive so that determines the menstrual cycle in case of uh, females now if you come back here on the gonads especially from the granulosa cells and from the sartoli cells the inhibin is secreted, inhibin uh, uh, suppresses the FSH activity, the FSH uh, secreting uh, uh, cells in the interpituitary FSH is uh, diminished. So that means it controls only FSH. Now, let us consider, uh, this is a broad, uh, broad outline of the gonadotropin releasing hormone in male and female. So the main problem is here, or main uh, uh, thing is here, because uh, the hypothalamus, uh, um, if it, whether it is a male type hypothalamus or a female type hypothalamus, because the hypothalamus, uh, because if it is a male type, so there is a uh, the hormonal profile or hormonal secretion or GnRH release is uh, continuous. It's not a, a monthly variation. If it is a female type, there would be a uh, alteration in the the GnRH secretion activity. Now let us uh, uh, see here in this, uh, this is a feedback regulation of the hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis. Now we have the behavioral effects associated. We will not uh, uh, think about right, right at this point. This is hypothalamus here. Then hypothalamus uh, releases GnRH and the GnRH uh, uh, stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete LH and FSH. Now, LH acts on the leading cells in the testis semiferous tubules, and these leading cells, the, uh, they will secrete testosterone, and this testosterone have the, all the uh, masculine uh, effects or secondary sex characters or what is called the realizing effects. Now, the testosterone levels, they will try to suppress the LH secretion. That's in, through the negative feedback at the pituitary level, and this uh, they try to uh, suppress the hypothalamus at the hypo hypothalamic level. This is a long loop. And it will also, because the testosterone level will also have an effect on the central nervous system. So here, the effect, uh, we don't know. They have not mentioned it is negative or positive. Maybe depends. Now, come back here. So now, what is happening with FSH? Now, if you are looking at the FSH, FSH uh, stimulates the Sartoli cells. It, because it acts on the Sartoli cells. It will increase the proliferation of the, or uh, uh, try to, uh, the activity or the proliferation of the uh, spermatogonial cells. At the same time, for the proliferation of the spermatogonial cells, uh, you require the Sartoli cell activity, and uh, that would be activated. And now, once the spermatogenesis sets in, so because FSH sets in the spermatogenesis and at the same time it should not continue forever because there is a, a gap there is a, in the semiferous tubules uh, we need to have a spacing for uh, the entire activity 
So now the inhibin is secreted from the sertoli cells because sertoli cells can accommodate only fewer things there. And that would have an inhibitory input uh, to the interpretatory so that FSH secretion is uh, diminished. So this is uh, only to this. Uh, no LH, it does not have the LH. LH is entirely dependent upon the uh, testosterone. Now, there are some, some the long loop uh, inhibitory effects on the hypothalamus are also reported. So this is about the uh, males. Now, let us uh, go into detail here. What is happening if you are if I am taking with the uh, the the males? This is the feedback regulation of GnRH in males, and this is male females. I will just uh, try to revise what has happened in the males. We we have uh, discussed the the this is a hypothalamic GnRH neuron secretes GnRH here, and this GnRH these green lines LH and FSH are coming. This is the testis seminiferous tubules that secretes. So now we have in the seminiferous tubules the leading cells. They will secrete uh, the testosterone. Now the testosterone uh, will have an inhibitory effect on uh, one another set of neurons here, what are known as a kispeptin neurons. These kispeptin neurons are situated in the acute nucleus, and these kispeptin, these are this is the inhibitor here, they are suppressed. They are suppressed. And these kispeptin neurons activate the GnRH neurons. GnRH, they have the link. Because if you are looking at these uh, uh, GnRH neurons, they are not expressed with the steroid uh, receptors. But uh, these kispeptin neurons are expressed with the, uh, the steroid receptors. And they will uh, suppress this. Uh, and by suppressing this, uh, you have uh, decreased activity here and a decreased GnRH. This is a long loop. Now, so now this will uh, be also then if you are looking at the FS, the another component because the testosterone testosterone is secreted and uh, this will activate the inhibin. This inhibin is released and inhibin suppresses the the gonadal trap there in the interpituitary and uh, decrease the FSH level. Now here is uh, in this uh, particularly in males. Uh, the number of uh, kispeptin neurons in the the anteroventral periventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus are few, very few. So as as good as uh, negligible, and that is why it is broken. Though it uh, stimulates and it is uh, having a stimulatory effect, they are very few, or practically they are not participating. But uh, under such uh, under circumstances, they may be activated. Now, if you are looking at the GnRH pulses. How the GnRH release is happening? The GnRH release happens, it is one day. So if you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that means uh, there are 12 pulses. That is, uh, every two hour, one pulse of GnRH uh, uh, release is taking place uh, from the these uh, hypothalamus. So this is the pulse style activity. It's continuous, it's tonic, there are no changes. Uh, in the day, uh, daily, so it is happening. Maybe these pulsatile activity may be more in the morning hours or less sparser in the evening. So on an average, this may happen. This is as far as the the regulation of uh, uh, GnRH from the males. So there is a continuous uh, uh, pulses of uh, GnRH are released. Now, if we are looking at the females, what is happening there? So now the female hypothalamus is different. Now these female hypothalamus, in this field, female hypothalamus, we have these uh, kispeptin neurons in the anteroventral uh, periventricular nucleus are more. They are almost nil. They are more here. Now you have uh, the a large number of these neurons expressed with uh, the estrogen receptors. Here, there are no estrogen receptors there, and here, estrogen receptors. Now, let us see how, how this thing is working in the females. In the females, again, we start with the GnRH secretion. GnRH is released from the GnRH neuron of the hypothalamus. And from here, it would uh, stimulate LH and FSH, the green ones here, that would activate the ovary. 
and by activating the ovary so that would uh, uh, synthesize uh, increase the granulosa uh, follicular growth and uh, the granulosa cell activity and increase the uh, estrogen secretion so now estrogen uh, inhibits the uh, kiss peptide neuron present in the RK nucleus and that would uh, uh, be inhibiting the GnRH neurons. This is one one of the loop. Now uh, coming back, so this estrogen would stimulate as the estrogen levels are increasing, it would stimulate the kiss peptide neurons present in the anteroventral periventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus, and they get activated. So there is a activation. There is a positive feedback. This activates them. This activation will increase the GnRH level. And this GnRH level will increase it further. At the same time, what is happening here, if you are looking at, uh, there is a granulosa cell secrete inhibin. So this inhibin suppresses the FSH level. So that means uh, there is a, a partial uh, change in the gonadotropins uh, in, the, in the different phase. And uh, that I would come back in the next uh, slide. So that means uh, we have uh, the negative feedback here in this arcuate nucleus and kispeptin neurons and a positive feedback here the the interventral periventricular nucleus the neurons present here these kispeptin neurons so these are this is a kispeptin receptor this is known as a gpr54 or a kispeptin receptor expressed here and that would activate the gnrh now if you are looking at the the this is for monthly one month uh, uh, discharge pattern of the GnRH pulses. So now the GnRH pulses here, I'm making it uh, daily. So daily it's happening. It's monthly. You can just see that uh, in the early phase, early late phase of the, uh, during the menstrual, this is the late phase of the menstrual cycle and the early phase of the menstrual cycle, there is a regularity. Then after that, this frequency of these discharges or pulses are increasing. And this frequency at one stage that, that reaches maximum and then there will be a uh, decrease. So these are the GnRH pulses happening in the, uh, uh, in the hypothalamus, uh, that is, uh, that these secreting neurons. Now let us consider, consider them uh, in, the, in the graph here. If you are looking at, uh, we have uh, events 1 to 10 events 1 to 10 are marked here and uh, the events 1 to 10 the the number one event is a GnRH activation of the interrepetitory release of FSH and LH so this is one this is number one number two FSH number two FSH and LH uh, produce estradiol that would stimulate these uh, follicle cells to proliferate the number of uh, the various number of uh, follicles the graphene follicles the primordial follicles they try to uh, try to grow they try to grow here in the in the early early part of the uh, follicular phase so now they will try to increase the estrogen now at this point of time estrogen exerts a negative feedback effect on the kispeptin neuron this is kispeptin neurons and uh, they have uh, these estrogen receptors here so that means there will be a negative feedback so then as uh, if you are looking at uh, in the late phase so that means that when the follicle size becomes large and when it secretes a large amount of estradiol so then suddenly so that means when the follicle size is large or uh, the more estradiol so this will have a positive effect that's positive feedback so that means number four this is number four one two three is a proliferation where the negative feedback is operating now then number four is the beginning the large quantity of estradiol coming up that would stimulate the kispeptin neuron and this kispeptin neurons uh, uh, the increases the kispeptin uh, receptors and these kispeptin receptors activate the GnRH and GnRH re releases or more now you have the GnRH release number that would uh, uh, try to increase LH and FSH peak at the same time what is happening the inhibin is coming up so that the FSH levels are a little bit suppressed suppressed uh, anyway 
number 8 so this would make the the graphene follicle so the internal formation and the eccentric placement of the ovum and the rupture of the uh, ovum uh, forming the corpus luteum so that means uh, that this is what happens uh, uh, from this stage uh, to this this is a corpus luteum formation where this is the ovulation the ovum is released and the corpus luteum formation this is corpus luteum formation so that means uh, the number eight number nine number uh, number nine these are all under the positive feedback influence now come back here number 10 the corpus luteum is formed then after certain level it has come to the 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 activity the resumes the inhibitory activity resumes that would be the negative feedback now if i were to tell the stages 10 1 2 3 have a negative feedback operations the stages 4 to 9 they are having a positive feedback effect on the kispeptin neurons and that would how the cyclical pattern of the uh, menstruation is taking place and if if i am if i am looking at uh, the discharge pattern i have synchronized here so this you can just see the frequency of the discharge is increasing and uh, uh, somewhere around here the, the just before eight there will be maximum and then once the this uh, rupture is taking place and that would uh, decrease so this would be gnrh pulses this i have uh, explained here now looking uh, uh, into the next stage uh, wherein we want to see the hormone levels uh, here in this graph i am trying to show the lh and fsh levels in the the this is the menstrual phase menstrual phase you can see that uh, this dotted line is fsh level you have these fsh levels slowly increasing and at this some level it is decreasing because of the inhibition effect and then again increasing because of the GnRH pulses, GnRH pulses here. Now, the, if you are looking at the LH level, LH levels are gradually increasing. So you, are, you can just see that gradually increasing and this will be uh, reaching a point in the, in the, in the, at the time of ovulation. At the time of ovulation, you can just see that uh, this, uh, the number of discharge is uh, highest here just prior to the uh, LH surge now that it declines and then again it comes back below the normal now if you are looking at uh, this kiss peptin levels this kiss peptin levels uh, the red one here so they are slowly increasing so once increasing just before uh, to, to just before the lh surge kiss peptin levels are high and then that is the reason the kiss peptin neurons activate the gnrh neurons uh, that would bring about this uh, uh, LH surge. So this kiss peptin neurons. So that would be having a, a positive positive effect on here. Now, if you are looking at the, uh, if you are looking here, this is estrogen level. You have uh, almost uh, double peak. The first one is larger. The second one is uh, less. This is the estrogen level, and uh, the second part it is a progesterone level. It is single peak. You have only progesterone level. And if you are having, there are two graphs here. The dotted ribbon is the the inhibin B, uh, inhibin A, inhibin A. You can just see that inhibin A is a, uh, the second. Is it has a good peak here that has a, a, a profound inhibitory loop on the interpituitary. And then inhibin B is uh, going having a, a positive effect. You can just see that uh, it is uh, uh, having a positive feedback and uh, these things. So that means uh, the entire menstrual cycle is a complex one and uh, we are trying to understand each one of them. Nowadays uh, we have these kispeptin neurons and uh, that will try to explain the uh, the changes in the or a shift of the, the negative feedback to positive feedback uh, as I have explained. So now going back uh, further, so these are the various factors that uh, uh that influence uh, the kiss peptin neuron so that means uh, the circadian rhythm circadian rhythm the arginine vasopressin that is the adh and the vip the neurokinins and all those things they will activate the melatonin activates the environmental cues that is the light the endogenous rhythms they will activate 
and especially certain group of animals, they, these cues are coming from the seed as a seasonal effect. Adrenal glands, glucocorticoids, they will activate. So that is why you may find in um, high, uh, hypo, uh, that means uh, Edison's disease or a, a Cushing syndrome, you have the influence on this uh, activity. The uh, either uh, um, the suppression or uh, the uh, alteration in the menstrual cycle. Other factors that means the onset of ovulation. Onset of ovulation depends in certain species, the stimulation and uh, the environmental factors, the stress, the exercise, the day night, day night variation, which happens in case of the night shift workers and the body fat mass so that means if it, if they are obese they will try to increase this and they may try to suppress uh, sometimes it increases the activity the sex steroids already we have seen we have seen the gonads and their activity having a plus minus activity on the kiss 15 neurons so these are the various factors they will uh, try to influence the gnrh neurons that will bring about especially this one is uh, mm, primarily true for uh, the um, females they are also true for the males because of whatever is happening these these effects are uh, uh, true for males as well now next uh, next hormone is a pro opio melanocortin so this pro opio melanocortin you try to remember so this is one of those uh, uh, hormone which has been uh, you, there in the archaic nucleus so this is satiety centers, the AGRP neuron and POMC CART neuron, and that would uh, activate the satiety. It increases the satiety. The POMC neurons, uh, they would suppress the satiety. So that means uh, it will say that uh, enough. So this is this neuroarchite uh, POMC neurons are there in the archaic nucleus. And what is this POMC? The pro pure It's a precursor molecule. This precursor molecule have a gamma MSH and ACTH, lipotropin, and uh, once they are cleaved further, you have a alpha MSH coming, and we have this CLIP. A CLIP is a corticotropin like uh, uh, intermediate uh, peptide, especially in the intermediate lobe. So we have this CLIP protein, so this component is released. Or otherwise, uh, in case of the anterior pituitary, it is a corticotropin. So then, uh, then we have, uh, in the uh, the lipotropin beta lipotropin beta lipotropin is again gamma lipotropin and beta endorphin are released so this is about uh, uh, pro opio melanocortin which is coming from the uh, neurons in the archaic nucleus and if you go it further these neurons uh, i have already mentioned they produce ACTH, lipotropin alpha beta gamma msh and beta endorphin POMC is expressed in not only in our nucleus, they are also expressed in the pituitary gland and also expressed in the brainstem. Because if you are looking at the brainstem, especially the periaqueductal gray, there are formation of the endorphins. So that is where they are required to suppress the pain. The tissue specific uh, uh, translation proteolysis of POMC gives rise to either ACTH or MSH or endorphin. For example, the corticotropes in the interior pituitary produce predominantly ACTH. The melanotropes of the hypothalamus produce predominantly alpha and uh, beta MSH uh, from, from the intermediate lobe. The POMC regulate food intake, energy balance, also regulates the immunity, the melanocyte pigmentation, that is the color of the skin and color of the hair via the melanocyte stimulating hormone. The melanocyte stimulating hormone, releasing in hormone is a tropic hormone which is released from the uh, hypothalamus and uh, they will try to uh, prevent or suppress the release of MSH from the intermediate lobe of the pituitary. So these are some of the uh, functions of these uh, uh, pro opio melanocortin and MSH inhibiting hormone. Now, coming back here, this is a MSH release inhibiting hormone. This releasing hormone, uh, this is a releasing hormone that is a melanocyte stimulating hormone release inhibiting hormone. It inhibits the release of melanocyte stimulating hormone from intermediate lobe. 
it stimulates the production the cmsh stimulates the production i have already mentioned about it uh, the skin and hair of course it has uh, other effects uh, as mentioned and in some animals uh, this influence is the uh, the, the melanophores that means change in the color of those uh, animals they change the color the camouflage and these are, are the animals they try to use these pigments or melanocyte stimulating hormone uh, predominantly now going further with the other second part second part wherein hypothalamus controls the post repetitory directory here we it controls by the oxytocin and the arginine mesopressin that is the adh neurons uh, release into the circulation now we, we we look into the oxytocin release so these are five is the oxytocin uh, releasing hormone coming from the paraventricular nucleus and supraoptic nucleus they are released here now what this oxytocin releasing hormone they can be stimulated by the labor by the by the, uh, the first stage or second stage of the labor or even in the late pregnancy the oxytocin uh, levels keep on increasing and that would uh, begin the onset then suckling reflex during the the, um, the tactile activation of the the nipple and areola around so those uh, sensory modalities they will reach the um, they will go through the uh, the reticular system and then to the thalamus and they will have the hypothalamic uh, connections there and they will uh, activate this uh, uh, suckling reflex so that uh, the oxytocin is released so there are oxytocin stimulating peptides these are some of those uh, things now we have what this oxytocin does it increases it contracts the the myoepithelial cells of the mammary gland and it produces the contraction of the uterine smooth muscle so that uh, the there is a delivery of the baby and in case of males the oxytocin is necessary for ejaculation of the uh, semen from the uh, the vast difference and from the the prostatic secretions and also they are the oxytocin is necessary for the motility of the spermatozoa now on the nervous system this oxytocin is a known as a happy hormone it is a happy hormone it is one of those hormones which uh, uh, produces the satisfaction if you are looking at these actions here it is a anoxygenic effect it has an anoxygenic effect so that means uh, it is you are satisfied you are not able to you are not uh, uh, craving for food anti nociception it decreases the pain perception it decreases the anxiety anxiolytic and it uh, uh, propagates the maternal behavior so if you are looking at the the uh, any maternal behavior it is the hormone which is uh, uh, which is because uh, during a, a nursing time so the uh, the maternal behavior it propagates the maternal behavior wherein the mother uh, try cares the baby then it also have a pair bonding in case of the the two the male and the female mating behavior the pair bonding this oxytocin is released even during sexual intercourse the oxytocin is released during orgasm now the salt appetite increases the salt appetite and it increases the sexual behavior i have already mentioned about that the orgasm uh, at the orgasm the the oxytocin is released and it is trying to give the social recognition now this is uh, about the oxytocin now this this one is for adh release i briefly touch upon this you can go back to my other youtube lecture wherein i have uh, detailed uh, these uh, these things i have taken it from there now this hypothalamus has uh, uh, for adh secretion if you, if you are looking looking back here this is that neuron and that would coming here so that means it is number five that is releasing the ADH here in the post pituitary Now, so now this is controlled by the osmoreceptors in the para, uh, that will activate the paraventricular nucleus and the supraoptic nucleus that would release the ADH. Now, these osmoreceptors are activated by the plasma osmolality, increased osmolality activates osmoreceptors, increases the ADH secretion, the ADH secretion try to uh, hold the water back 
so that the osmolality which is increased that would be uh, managed or it will be regular, regularized. So that is one part. And at the same time, the ADH increases or uh, activates the blood vessel or uh, produces the increases the blood pressure. Now coming back here, decreased plasma volume decreases the blood pressure, decreased blood pressure decrease the baroreceptor activation of the heart and the great vessels and decrease the activation of the NTS that is the nucleus tractor solitaris in the medulla and these have an uh, inhibitory control or uh, inhibitory control over the supraoptic nucleus and the osmoreceptors so if it is decreased so the inhibition is decreased so that means they are excited and that is one point at the same time it, it increases the the blood pressure that is a smooth muscle contraction this is known as a vasopressin it produces the vasopressin effect and these are the factors which increase the ADH secretion exercise stress pain nausea hypoglycemia angiotensin 2 all these increase the ADH secretion the caffeine alcohol norepinephrine atrial nitrogen peptide they will all uh, suppress the ADH secretion so this is all about uh, the antidiuretic hormone uh, regulation uh, from the hypothalamus in brief. Now, uh, I just uh, narrate these things. Oxytocin release, area is supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus. They're coming from the touch receptors of the breast and uterus. Uh, these are the receptors there. Then ADH release, it is from the supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus in the hypothalamus, osmoreceptors. OVLT, that is organum vasculosum uh, lamina terminalis, and the angiotensin 2 and subfornical organs. The TRH release coming from the paraventricular and periventricular nucleus, this is the uh, thermoreceptors and others. The CRH release, this is again from the same group of neurons, the paraventricular and periventricular nuclei. This is having a limbic system associated with emotion, stress. The reticular formation, hypothalamus, and the feedback, interpretatory and suprachiasmatic nucleus. All these, it, it, it encompasses a number of uh, areas. GnRH release, it is the pre optic area and orchid nucleus, wherein hypothalamic cells uh, are sensitive to estrogen, visual and tactile receptors, skin and genitalia for reflex ovulators. The prolactin inhibiting hormone and prolactin releasing hormone, they are coming from the arcade nucleus, touch receptors and unknown receptors. Touch receptors, uh, that means uh, the, the breast feeding, so that would activate the suckling reflex, that would activate the, uh, the PRH. The growth hormone releasing hormone or growth hormone inhibitory hormone, periventricular and arcade nucleus, it is a somatic uh, receptors. These are uh, the brief uh, outline of various uh, uh, entry and post repetitory functions. Uh, briefly, I cover up uh, how the adrenal medulla is controlled by the hypothalamus in this. Uh, now, if you are looking at this, this is a um, pontomedullary uh, reticular system. This is the lateral parabrachial nucleus. This is the NTS, nucleus tractor solitarius, and the dorsal vagal nucleus here. And this is a rostro ventro. Uh, lateral medulla and CMLM, CVLM, CVLM and RVLM. CVLM is a caudoventral lateral medulla, RVLM is a rostroventral. Now, what happens? Uh, uh, these, uh, these neurons in the paraventricular nucleus and the dorsal medial nucleus of the hypothalamus, they have the parvocellular components, uh, parvocellular neurons, uh, small cells. They will activate this uh, parabrachial nucleus and um, the NTS. And then uh, we have these uh, uh, dorsal ventral nucleus and RVLM. So now, once they activate the RVLM, RVLM is this is the direct link. So they will activate the RVLM, and this RVLM will uh, activate the intermedial lateral spinal cord, uh, intermedial lateral uh, column of the uh, area of the spinal cord. So if you are looking at the lateral column, this is the lateral column of the these things so this would be activated so that means i'm trying to take it directly here and maybe indirectly these are uh, uh, too devious because it is an emergency response 
the adrenal medullary response is an emergency response so that means uh, it will activate the rvlm directly and this rvlm in turn activate the uh, lateral column especially the t8 and l1 so that forms the uh, splanchnic uh, greater splanchnic nerve and this splanchnic nerve contains uh, because most of those uh, uh, the uh, the nerves of sympathetic uh, chain uh, they will be the post ganglia you have in this chain you have the post ganglionic neurons but here these uh, pre uh, the the pre ganglionic neurons that means these are uh, extended neurons they reach up to the medulla the adrenal medulla and here they release uh, the they use this adrenal medulla as a this that means the adrenal medulla acts as a ganglion especially these um, uh, cells which secrete adrenaline and noradrenaline catecholaminergic cells so now this is a splanchnic nerve preganglionic the transmitter released here is a stylcholine and then that would activate the release of a hormone so that means uh, this regulation is essential for the flight and the fight response so for any emergency response uh, so this is uh, prepared through the hypothalamus and uh, that will activate the rvlm and uh, that would uh, bring it down and activate the intermediate uh, lateral column or the column of the spinal cord or nucleus of the spinal cord and then it is coming up that's one component so that means uh, hypothalamus directly regulates the adrenal medullary activity and the flight flight response now coming back uh, hypothalamus activates the vagus now if i am i'm i'm looking at the vagus i i'm taking back here the same same preparation the paraventricular nucleus and dorsal median nucleus but the set of uh, things are different here so in the sense we have the dorsal uh, dorsal vagal nucleus the nts and dorsal vagal nucleus they participate in this now once the dorsal vagal nucleus is activated so now the vagus supplies the lungs the heart the viscera the stomach and uh, abdominal viscera I, all those things are supplied by the vagus now if i am talking about the lungs and the mediastinal structures if you are looking at thymus so all the thymus activity is also governed by the, the vagus nerve and uh, we have these uh, heart heart activities uh, it the vagus activity heart suppresses the activity there will be a stretch maybe that may bring in something uh, atrial nitrotic peptide that is a hormone so now if you are coming with the stomach we have the gastrin and uh, the other hormones uh, vip and other hormones secreted by the gut they will be activated now most importantly the it supplies the pancreas beta cells of the pancreas are activated the insulin is uh, secreted so of course this insulin secretion is independent of the the glucose level it is a, a secretion is a de dependent upon the vagal nerve stimulation so that is how the vagus controls the pancreatic and the gastric hormones this is how through the hypothalamus this whole whole thing is uh, uh, coming up now uh, this is uh, i just want to summarize uh, these are the various hypothalamic control of the organs the first one i am trying to uh, tell here this uh, uh, regulatory hormones regulatory hormones these regulatory hormones of the anterior pituitary ac that means regulate acth tsh growth hormone prolactin fsh lh by uh, cortico crh trh then uh, ghrh and uh, our uh, somatostatin P pr are the prolactin releasing hormone or uh, prolactin inhibiting hormone the gonadotropin releasing hormone for this and the melanotropin releasing hormone or melanotropin release inhibiting hormone so these are all the uh, anterior pituitary hormones you can you can just uh, go through them so then we have these posterior pituitary hormones adh and oxytocin here the kidneys the adh is uh, the target organ and oxytocin we have uh, in females uh, the primarily the uterus and in case of the lactating woman it is the um, myoepithelial cells of the membrane gland
so then uh, in case of males it is the vas difference the tectus difference and the prostate gland including the spermatozoa so that is where the oxytocin works now the third point is uh, it will have a direct connection with the uh, supraadrenal medulla and uh, secrete uh, the the epinephrine or epinephrine for the flight and fright response now fourthly it will activate the the various viscera the thoracoabdominal viscera through the vagus they will try to regulate the pancreas and other hormone other uh, glands in the viscera especially the uh, git hormones this is in summary about uh, the hypothalamic control of the uh, endocrine glands now these are the keywords so that means uh, uh, i would just hypothalamic releasing hormones and their regulation that is one thing regulation of post pituitary regulation of oxytocin release regulation of the adh release the hypothalamic regulation of growth hormone hypothalamic regulation of tsh hypothalamic regulation of corticotropin releasing hormone hypothalamic regulation of prolactin hypothalamic regulation of gnrh it's more complex i have dealt in detail hypothalamic regulation of msh i have covered it hypothalamic regulation of adrenal medulla i have covered it hypothalamic regulation of the pancreas and gut hormones i mentioned it the pro pro prio pio melanocortin this is a pomc pomc neuron in the hypothalamus i mentioned and kisspeptin neurons in the hypothalamus you please uh, uh, look into these things now uh, next time i would talk about uh, the hypothalamus in regulating the circadian rhythms this is the next topic uh, i would take up uh, now so these are the reference books i have uh, i just uh, the gaitons genongs and kendall's textbook of neuroscience i have referred and i have read extensively on various topics though i have not listed everything but some of them are very interesting and you can try to learn especially this mirky corridor et al uh, the uh, estrogens on biological therapeutic actions of the growth hormone so you have the growth hormone here and uh, tanja and alberto they talk about the neural control of pancreas or whatever the, i'm trying to give you the concept there guimers and gorgio they will review the the uh, glucose homeostasis uh, through the hypothalamus especially through the pancreatic uh, uh, vagal supply the free man they he, he has uh, Uh, reviewed the prolactin uh, um, on prolactin in a physiological review and the trevisan they 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 have discussed about a kiss peptin and uh, what's uh, all about in human reproduction and uh, fin gold et al they are talking about gnrh secretion this is a, a textbook from the nc ncbi cell and kaufman et al uh, the about the kiss peptin so it is appeared in a trends in neurosciences so we have i have taken and even uh, many more books maybe i have uh, trying to comprehend each one of them uh, greater details i i can uh, i can uh, i am restricting myself to the briefly about this okay so now uh, maybe uh, if you have any any doubts or anything please post in the in the in my Uh, in the youtube link and so that we can have a discussion on this thank you so much thank you for your patience and uh, what i would request uh, you you listen to this lecture uh, in a piecemeal so that means one by one so though it is an extensive lecture but it will give a lot of information about the hypothalamic regulation of the um, hormones uh, uh, endocrine glands in in total Thank you.